Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Mike, and I'm a technical product marketing manager at Forward Networks. In space, nobody can hear you scream, but when you get emails to jump on a multi-team troubleshooting session, you just need to let that frustration out somehow, right? Wait, there's oxygen here, so I could take this off. Stand by one second. All right, in today's Demo Tuesday, we are gonna see how Forward's mathematically accurate digital twin can help Mike, a member of Rathco Inc.'s network team, from sitting on a long and drawn out troubleshooting call with several teams who will undoubtedly just start pointing fingers and saying, hey, that's not my issue, that's your issue. And then we'll just go through that vicious circle over and over and over again. And this is what makes you wanna just take that trip up to space to scream in peace. We want to make this as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions at all during the demo, please ask them in any chat, whether it's LinkedIn chat or YouTube, and we will answer them during the demo. Whoa. All right. So jumping into our email, we can see that while we were floating in space, we got a couple of troubleshooting tickets in. A uh, couple of things where they want me to jump on an AWS troubleshooting bridge. Um, let's take a look. So can't access this host in AWS from this specific host, which is sitting in a data center. Me being an ex-network guy uh, who used to work for uh, uh, Fortune 100s, I know that when I get an email like that, I just want to run and hide and try not to join the call, try to figure it out in a silo or take that ship up to space to scream. Because when you're on those calls, it's always other team members going, oh, it's not me, it's you, it's not me, it's you. Start pointing fingers at each other. Then you wind up wasting four hours of your day on a call that could have been solved in about five minutes or less using Forward Network's um, mathematical model. So let's jump into the platform and let's take a quick look and see what we can do. So we said we're gonna go from, oops, my keyboard apparently still is in space. All right, so we're gonna go from that NSX host. And you can see I'm just using regular search terms, so I'm not using anything weird or crazy. And we're gonna go to that IP address, which was 10.5.22.96, and it was on the destination, oops, not a URL. It was on either, we can either search by the layer four port ID or we can search by app ID. So we're gonna do layer four port SSH. So what it's doing right now is in the paths panel is it's laying out how this packet is going to traverse the network. So inside of the, the model, we compute all the paths and what we're seeing is for this particular flow, so we have one of five different paths that, that you know, like this can take. And what we're doing is we're laying it out inside of our paths pane. So you can see it starts in Atlanta, goes to San Jose, uh, goes back to Atlanta, which could be a problem in and of itself, but we'll see if there's anything else. It jumps into AWS, and then from AWS, it jumps into, sorry, from AWS US East, it goes to AWS US West. So let's expand this all out and let's see what's happening. So as we click, you'll actually drill into uh, the location and you can see via it highlighting that this is the host we're talking about. So let's grab some details on this host first. So let's remember, oh, that's the distributed vSwitch, not the host. That's the host. So let's remember his IP address of 10.6.142.197. So back to the search, we can see it starts in Atlanta, uh, goes over a VXLAN tunnel as indicated by uh, these, these dotted lines. If we click on it, it shows you that it's a VXLAN tunnel into San Jose. From San Jose, it goes through one firewall, which it looks like if we actually click on the firewall, we see um, exactly what this device is doing to it. So we can see um, the input ports, destination IPs, what zones, 
the egress zone out and we can see that uh, it's not blocking it. It's, it's, you know, like permitting it. So we're going to keep on trucking through this. Then we hit uh, an MPLS network back into Atlanta. We hit another firewall, which looks like we're going through with no problem. Then we hit the internet, which we ride a VPN tunnel to uh, AWS US East. And as we scroll through it, we hit a transit gateway, which that transit gateway now, if we click it, will show us, oh, hey, you know, we're coming in this transit gateway and then we're going through appearing to US West. Inside of US West, um, as we click, oops, let me back up. So we hit another transit gateway, then we're going into a firewall VPC, which it looks like there is a virtual firewall sitting inside of this VPC that is denying the traffic. And we can see that the name of the rule is no direct access to prod, and it's being dropped because it was denied by an ACL rule. Now, this is all, all fine and good, right? We can, in the old days, right, it would take us a couple of hours to find this device. We modify this device and we go, hey, you know, uh, uh, server guy, you should now be able to access um, your host in AWS. He comes back and he he could say one of two things. He bleh, he could say one of two things like, yeah, Mike, great job, you did it, or now, nah, Mike, you messed up. There must be another firewall somewhere that's blocking it. So most network guys, what they want to know first and foremost is is there full connectivity between point A and point B? Wouldn't it be great if you can just say, you know, we know we have a ton of firewalls. Wouldn't it be great to know that? we can then take these firewalls out of the equation just to make sure that we have full end-to-end -end reachability. Yeah. Used to be a pipe dream, but in forward, we can click this permit all mode. And what this does is it essentially in the model turns every firewall into a permit IP any any. And as you cross through a firewall that's blocking the traffic, it'll actually show you that it's blocking the traffic. So this originally was denied, but because we're in permit all mode, we're actually letting the traffic through as if the firewall's not there. Uh, if you're curious as to what rule was actually blocking this, so let me just back up one second. If we do C device state, what we'll do is we'll show you the zone that the, the traffic is hitting, and then we'll show you the rule that's causing um, this particular traffic to be dropped. So from here, we can see that there's a, a no direct access to prod, at least on this, this one device. We don't yet know if there's something else further on down the line that could potentially be blocking this traffic. So we're ignoring this one, uh, this one uh, by the name uh, Palo Alto device uh, inside of AWS. As you can see, we don't call out vendor. We just give you the the pertinent information for someone who may not be a, a firewall expert to know exactly what's going on and know how to, to triage um, the situation. So let's let's keep going down the list. So we hit a gateway load balancer. We go into, uh, we leave it. So we leave that that firewall VPC. And now we go into the, now we go into the prod VPC and we're bouncing around a few things. We hit a route table. We hit uh, and we hit a uh, we hit a availability zone. We're going through it, um, and then we see we hit a cloud security group where it says ACL rules ignored. Um, what this is telling you that not only was there a firewall blocking uh, the traffic, but there's also a cloud security ACL that's blocking it. Now, you know I'm. I was back in the day, uh, you know, network guy, uh, WAN architect through and through when cloud started to become prevalent and I jump on these calls, uh, cloud guys could turn around and say, yep, it's, uh, uh, you know, your device on the front of the cloud. You know, I, you know, like go into the device, I'd see, you know, anything that we control there, but it's like, you know, as like a network guy, you don't have visibility normally into some of these cloud constructs. So now we can see that inside of this um, database security group, there's actually a 
deny and it's being denied inbound. So if we're curious, we can come in here and we can see the configuration of this specific, um, specific security group. And let's scroll on over till we see the security group that's applied to that particular VM. So when we click it and we go to in security group, what we can see is remember our NSX host IP address 10.6.142.197 on SSH on a port SSH is not permitted inside of this. So not only do the firewall team or the network team, whoever runs that firewall need to add an access list, but also the cloud security guys have to go in and modify a security group to allow this particular flow in. Before forward, um, I was in a typical or a very similar situation to this one and we were troubleshooting the issue for at least two days. Um, cloud guys said it couldn't be the cloud, everything was good. Firewall guys were saying, well, it could be this firewall, it could be that firewall, you know, it's hard to pinpoint without a tool that'll tell you exactly, or a, 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 a platform that'll tell you exactly what will go through that device. Um, but with Forward, as you saw, with a simple, uh, a simple text search for a source, destination, and port, we were able to see the entire flow vendor agnostically shown on screen and actually click in to see all the pieces that make up that decision. All right, and with that, are there any questions about anything I've shown so far today? Any questions at all? You could ask questions about the, the quick space travel I had today, uh, about uh, uh, what you saw today in Demo Tuesday, um, or you know, anything tech related that you know, potentially forward can solve. This is where I wish I had a button on my stream deck to play some Jeopardy music. But we don't have that. So if we didn't get to your question during the live demo, we apologize and we'll definitely come back to them and answer them in the chat. Do you think you're a network champion? Head on over to forwardnetworks.com slash forward hyphen quest and give our game a try. Pick a persona. You can be a cloud guy, a security guy, or a network guy and be put through real examples inside of uh, the forward platform. Bonus, if you complete all three personas, we will send you a free t-shirt to prove to all your friends that you are indeed a network champion. You can head on over to our Bright Talk channel and watch our webinars on demand. We actually have all of our Demo Tuesdays on demand there, as well as on uh, uh, Forward Network's YouTube as well. Um, one specific uh, Bright Talk I want to point out is uh, Michael Winston, the Director of Network Architecture and Automation, sat down with uh, Andrew Kainitz, Principal Analyst and Forrester, and they had a discussion about how uh, digital twin technology saved his Fortune 500 over seven figures. Highly recommend you guys go watch that. Join us for our next Demo Tuesday, where it is our Halloween special on October 24th. I was in space today, was on vacation for the last one. What can we possibly do for Halloween? You're going to have to join in and see what we have in store. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic Tuesday and see you in two weeks.